Hello, my name's Rob McNeely and it's a pleasure to welcome you to this short series of videos. And uh, in these videos I want to share with you some of what I've learned over the years that's been helpful for me in the uh, use of hypnosis and in teaching it in different parts of the world. When I first learned hypnosis, I learned that hypnosis was a, a very complicated, very tricky uh, and actually very dangerous. You needed to be very well qualified, very well trained, uh, you need to be a professional before you could even be anywhere near it. And there were even, even legal uh, requirements for someone to be able to use hypnosis in the, the state of Victoria where I was born. Hypnosis has had strange company. It's been associated with uh, power, with magic, with the devil, with all kinds of weird things. And uh, in particular, general anaesthetics has been part of the jargon that have come into hypnosis. And uh, there's a historical basis to this that they both became popular around 100 years ago. And uh, uh, some of the jargon from, from general anaesthesia came across to hypnosis. And so there is often a, 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 in talking about hypnosis, there's the idea of putting someone to sleep, putting them out, putting them under, and so on, making them unconscious. I found that uh, it, it, it's a very much more useful beginning to, to take what Erickson spoke about as the common everyday trance and take that as a starting point. He spoke about the common everyday trance where you can get absorbed in reading a book, where you can be watching a movie, where you can be swimming, walking in nature, working in the garden. And uh, when we are in this uh, experience of being focused and absorbed in reading and gardening and whatever it is we're doing, then the, some certain things are, are, are very different for us. Time as a different experience, often we don't notice things, or we notice things differently. And if we think then of hypnosis, instead of being some weird and special uh, state or uh, something alien, if we think of it as an extension of this common everyday trance, then instead of worrying about uh, can someone be hypnotized and how deeply are they going to be hypnotized and so on, we can invite someone into an experience uh, and invite them to become focused and absorbed. And this is something that uh, they're already familiar with, with their uh, common everyday trance experiences. So it's something familiar, something easy. And then if we start from that, then we can start to work hypnotically in a way that's not intrusive, it's not imposed, it's not disrespectful and rather it can help to evoke something from within someone that they're more familiar with than they realize and that they can then have access to and, uh, and help to move from their problem towards their desired solution. And um, just uh, as a kind of rather abbreviated way of exploring this, because I'm wanting these, uh, this, these interactions to be useful to you, to be practical, not to be uh, uh, weighed down with some kind of theoretical uh, constraints that can always lead to, to dissension and argument and so on. But if we can begin with a description of hypnosis as an experience where there's focus and absorption that we can mutually agree as hypnosis, then we can start to get on with the process instead of arguing about whether it is or it isn't, or whether this is this or that, whether it's the same as meditation, different, and so on. So if you'll go along with me, just as a starting point, not to agree with me, but to just go along with this as a hypnosis, as hypnosis being an experience where there is focus and absorption, that we can mutually agree as hypnosis, then we're, up, we're ready to get started. Now, the second element that I want to mention here in this first video is the idea that when we are doing something that we like to do, whatever that is, <coughs> excuse me, when we doing something we like to do, we've got all of the resources that we need right at our fingertips. We're, 
if there are little interruptions, uh, things happen that we don't quite want, then we handle them and then we get on with the, get on with the show. If someone likes riding this bicycle uh, and their ch the chain comes off or they fall off or it rains or what, they handle that because they, they like the cycling. They handle all the petty interruptions that happen. They've got re all the resources they need to deal with anything that will happen with cycling. Otherwise, they wouldn't like it. So then, when we ask someone what they like to do, there's something about that question which is so uh, charming. Because when any of us do something that we like to do, we like it, and to talk about it is always a pleasure. So I'm inviting us to play with the idea that we can actually start a hypnotherapy session by asking, what do you like? And that creates a mood of wholeness, of play, of enjoyment, and it's a better place to start than what's the problem. And also then, if we, if we ask the question, what is it that you like about that? It helps to refine for us and for the client just where we're going. So if we come back to the cycling example, if we say, what do you like about cycling? Some people will say, I like the exercise. Some will say, I like the fresh air. Some people say, it gets me away out of the house. <coughs> or, excuse me, or... Other people will say, I, I get to ride with my friends. It's a, it's a way of connecting and, and uh, having good company. So it's going to be very different for different people. And if we don't ask that, we will just assume that we know what it means for someone to like something. So the next step uh, that I'm offering as a, as a starting point for us to play with is to ask, what is the problem that you want to do something about today? Not what's the problem. That's too big a question. But what would you like to talk about today that would make a difference? If we could do something that would be helpful, what would that be? Some kind of um, hint, some kind of uh, bias in asking about the problem, a bias towards usefulness, towards the solution. Then also we can ask someone, uh, what is it about that that's particularly problematic to you? If someone has had some kind of past trauma, if we don't ask what, how come that's still a problem to you, then the only option we have is to treat them as if they're suffering from PTSD. <coughs> Excuse me, coughing. But if we find out from someone what is it about this that's still troublesome, some people have flashbacks. Some people will be unable to sleep, unable to go to work. Some people will uh, have some physical disability. It's going to be different for different people. And unless we ask, what is it about the problem that's problematic, we'll be second guessing and t treating a generic situation instead of with working with this particular individual. And we, usually when we find out how come this is a problem to you, what is it in particular about the problem, that is troubling you, it becomes much more evident. <clears throat> it becomes clearer to us and to the client what's missing for them so that if they found it, they'd be okay. This provides a solution focus. Instead of asking what's wrong that needs fixing, we can explore with them what is it that you want? What is it that's missing for you, you got out of touch with, that if you could get back in contact with, you'd be okay. <clears throat> so then we've got, we know something about who this person is, what they like and what they like about it. it tells us a lot about the person. <clears throat> we know something about what's brought them there, what's the problem, and how come that's a problem, and in particular what's missing for them. That gives us a, a beautiful sense, and sometimes for the client for the first time also, a sense of what is going to be useful and helpful and relevant here? So, when we ask the question, what's missing, we then know what we're looking for. <clears throat> and if we can start from the assumption, from the experience that when we do something we like, 
we've got the resources to cope with that, <clears throat> then we know what we're looking for and we know where to look for a resource for an experience that's missing for someone. So then that gives us the ingredients, that gives us a direction, it gives us a starting point, and here comes the hypnosis. We can ask someone, uh, would it be okay to do whatever it is that you like to do? If they like riding a bike, can we go for a bike ride? If they like reading a book, can we read a book? If they like playing with their dog, can we play with your dog? <clears throat> because they like it, they're usually very, very willing to uh, uh, be in that experience. So then here we have an experience, doing what they like, that's an experience. <clears throat> so then all we need to do is invite focus, focus on some part of the experience, then invite absorption into the experience. We've got an experience, we've got focus, we've got absorption. So we've got all of the ingredients that we are going to uh, agree for this time at least, as, as meeting the requirements to be called hypnosis. <clears throat> then, when we've invited this, if we look at the client, we will see changes that happen that give us a hint that there's some hypnosis happening. But actually, they're just the experiences that happen when anyone gets focused and absorbed. If you were to watch anyone, your friends or family or even yourself, when you're watching television, when you're reading a book, if you were to somehow take out of the corner of your awareness somehow, just notice what's happening, you'll see a difference in your blinking. Your, your breathing generally slows down a little. There's often a relative stillness in your body. Uh, <clears throat> Sometimes uh, the, 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 the muscles of your face kind of smooth out somewhat. There are these changes. <clears throat> and if we speak these changes that we can observe, that helps to let someone know something's happen, happening, and it also uh, helps to encourage them. <clears throat> so there's the invitation into hypnosis. That's a simple uh, possibility of inviting anyone into hypnosis. Let's do what you like to do, get some focus, get some absorption, and we're going to comment on the changes. <clears throat> then, we know where we are, we know where the resources are, now we know, let's go looking. So we can ask a client, in you riding your bike, in reading your book, notice how it is for you to, whatever is missing, feel confident, feel peaceful, feel strong, feel courageous, feel happy, feel whatever it is that's missing, assuming that they will find it in this experience. Now I'm talking about this conceptually and, and I'm going to offer you uh, an exercise in a minute to see how, you, how it feels from the inside, but I'm just wanting to give a sense of, uh, of the structure before we get into it. <clears throat> so we're, we're into the experience that someone likes, we're asking them to find the resource that's missing in the problem, and assuming that it's going to be in the experience that they like. And to my experience so far, uh, 35 years or so, it's always there. There may be an, uh, uh, an exception. I haven't met it yet. So we're looking for it, and we're going to expect to find it. Now, once someone's found it, we can ask them to sit in it, to, to just soak it up, to marinate in it, to get to know it, to learn it. Instead of just saying, oh, okay, here we are, we're right, here, off we go. It's somehow nice to let someone just sit in it, to let it settle in their body as an experience that they've got. <clears throat> then the next step is simply to help them to connect the experience that they are having, doing what they like to do, and bring that to the area that was problematic. And we're going to play with three or four different ways of doing this. One is for us to say, what you're doing in your life, it's the same as the problem. And we can just make that connection. This is the same as that. Someone likes riding a horse and they have a problem flying in a plane. Flying in a plane is like riding a horse. Someone likes cooking and they're having a problem with their daughter. Being with your daughter is like cooking. And if we just make that blanket connection 
some clients will actually see the connection and they think, ah, oh, okay. Not everybody will. <clears throat> some people uh, don't really quite make sense and, you know, for uh, if you were to stand back, it's a little bit of a weird uh, comment to make. The second way that we can help the connection is to say to the client, how do you see? What is it about riding a horse that's useful for you to be on a plane? What is it that you know about cooking that could be relevant for you being with your daughter? What is it about cycling that's going to be helpful for you to speak in public? And so on. We can ask the client to make the connection. And sometimes they can do that. The next step is to introduce the idea of learning. When you first learn to ride a horse, it may not have been easy, but somehow you learned and da 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 da, and now you like it. So learning to ride a plane can be da 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 da. When you learnt to cook, it wasn't necessarily easy. You might have made some mistakes, and it took some time. La 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 la, and now you enjoy it. So. In the same way that you learn to cook, you can learn to be with your daughter. So that's the third way. I'm sorry, that's the second way. The third way, learning. And the beautiful thing about learning is that it, it, it transforms the connection as like, just do it and get on with it. It transforms it into a process. And like any learning, it be there and we lose it and it comes and goes. and. Sometimes we get it and sometimes it's there permanently, other times it's there and then it's gone and it comes and goes and we need to remind ourselves and so on. It takes the pressure off us and off the client. <clears throat> and lastly, if still there's still no connection, we can offer the idea that you don't need to make the connection immediately. You don't have to see the connection here, but you can be interested to see what kind of things can happen over the next day, week, month and so on after you've left here. So then we're done. We've, we know what we're looking for. We've found it in the likes. We've brought the, the resource to the problem. Then we can ask someone to sit in that and just notice how this is now to, to be on a plane like you're riding a horse, to be with your daughter like you're cooking, to just sit with that and notice how that is. Then we can ask someone to, when they're ready, come out of hypnosis. And in the same way that we don't need to have any special ritual, uh, when we finish a book, we just close the book and then maybe sit there for a minute and then get up with, and get on with our life. Or <clears throat> we've been riding a horse, we don't need to count down from 10 to 1, we can just get off the horse and you know, get on with our life. So we can invite someone to, to complete what they need to do and when they're ready, they come out of hypnosis and then there we are. Finally, we can ask a client, so what's different now? And asking what's different now is such a beautiful way of, of getting some feedback about how the process was for the client, not according to us, but according to them. And if a client says, oh, I feel just terrific. I feel this is how I've always wanted to feel. Good, well, what can we do to keep this going and how can you da 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 da? <clears throat> That's, of course, what we were hopeful. But sometimes the other extreme, what's different now? Nothing. Okay. Well, the sooner we know that nothing's happened, the better. So then if nothing is different, nothing has changed, we can have a conversation about what might have been more useful and so on, and then that sets us up for the next time. So right at the end of the session then, we, we're finished, uh, things are done. I, I think it's so nice to say thank you. Thank you for trusting me with your problem. Thank you for allowing me to be part of your solution. Thank you is a beautiful word, two words, beautiful expression. It helps to, it's like a full stop. It says, okay, we're done, thank you. And also it's, it's a, a pleasant, mutually uh, agreeable, mutually comforting comment to make and to have made to us. So that's, that's uh, the, um, the process that I'm offering for you to play with. And there's a little e-book that, uh, that uh, you can have that comes with this video where these steps are outlined so that you can uh, follow them if you would like. And I invite you to do that and to try that with your friends, your family, 
and with your clients and just see what can happen. The worst that can happen is that you'll uh, waste a bit of time. That's the worst that can happen. Can't do any damage. <clears throat> but in any case, now I want you to I want to invite you into an experience to see how it is for you. See what it's like for you to have, if you're interested, to to find out what this is like from the inside. Now, because I don't know you personally, I can only speak generally and. Uh, it's a matter for you to translate my words into something that fits for you and translate some things that I don't say quite as you might like into something that's more uh, fitting for you. <clears throat> now, and this is just an invitation. If, you, if you're not interested in, in going through with this, then turn the video off and just have a look at the, uh, the e-book and uh, try it with your, with your clients with your friends, or with yourself. So if you're interested, just think for a moment about something that you like to do, something that you were doing recently, something that was pleasing, something that when you were doing it, you're thinking, oh, if only I could do a little bit more of this, this, is, this would be just excellent. And whatever that is, if you could think for a moment about what it is that you like about that, and give yourself a moment to reflect on this. You like what you like. What is it about that? <clears throat> you might even want to write it down. It's up to you. And then if you would, think about some problem, something that's been bugging you, troubling you, that you want to do something about. Something that it might be minuscule, it might be life-shattering, doesn't matter what, the dimension. Think about something that's real, for you, problematic for you, that you've been suffering from, that you want to do something about. <clears throat> and then if you would, think about what is it about this that has it be a problem to you. Do you not like the feeling? Is it stopping you doing something? Is there something about it that's... What is it about this problem that particularly troubles you? And again, you might want to write that down. It's up to you. Then comes this marvellous question, and it might be self-evident, it may not need to be asked, but if it's not self-evident, then here's the question. What's missing for you that if you were to have access to it, this would make a useful difference to you, would be helpful to you to move from what's been troubling you and move towards a solution? So. What's missing for you? What is it? If a miracle happened, and in this experience that's following, you, you, you were able to be the way you want to be, what would that be? <clears throat> At the end of the session, if you got what you wanted, what would be different for you? What would be present for you? And whatever's present for you, whatever would be there after the miracle, at the end of the session, that's present, that might give you a hint about what is absent, about what is missing in the problem. And again, you might want to write that down. Don't need to. It might, it might be interesting, it might be useful for you. And as soon as you're ready, with all of those, that's all we need to know about the, the questions before we get started. So my invitation is to find yourself a, a, a chair to sit in or something to lie, lie down on, doesn't matter what. Just somewhere where you can, your body can be supported so you don't need to give it any special attention for the next little while. And then, if you would, let yourself recall the actual experience of doing whatever it is that you identified that you like doing. Whatever that is. Perhaps remembering sometime where this was happening. Or maybe imagining sometime that this was happening. Doesn't really matter. But just whatever way you can start to connect with the experience that you like to do. And then as you're in this experience, to whatever degree that you are, 
could you look around in your experience that you can notice in your experience something that you can start to focus on? It may be some sounds, it may be something that you see, something in the air, something about how you feel, or it might vary from time to time, from this to that, it really doesn't matter. But to just allow whatever the focus is to be just so as it is. And then as a natural consequence of you focusing in this way, to allow yourself to become more absorbed in your experience. Not necessarily as absorbed as you think that you should or that you ought or that I might think or that someone else might expect, but simply allowing yourself to be as absorbed as you happen to be. And then as you allow this to continue, you don't need to notice how some physiological changes can happen without you making any effort, without you even needing to be aware. There might be some subtle change in your breathing, perhaps slightly slower, ever so slightly deeper. There might be some subtle change in your eyebrows and your eyelids blinking. They may have even closed or have a tendency to close. It doesn't really matter what. It may be that there's some alteration in your face. Some, some of the face can kind of smooth out. Maybe some change in the sensations in your face. Your face might feel cool or warm. None of that really matters. Maybe some change in your shoulders. They might drop a little. Might be some other sensations. Whatever you notice is fine and you don't need to notice anything in particular. The only important thing is that you allow yourself to be in your experience to whatever degree that you happen to be. And now, my invitation is for you to start to sense from within your experience of being in this experience that you like, to start to sense and notice and become aware of feeling how you want to feel, to begin to notice how you can have whatever that experience was that was missing, a feeling of confidence, a feeling of calmness, whatever it was that you identified as being missing. Just notice how it is for you to find this experience and notice that you can find it within yourself, within this experience that you like. <clears throat> Take a moment. You might look around. You might find it easily. Or maybe it will find you. None of that's important. And then if you just sit with this, very likely that if it hasn't already happened, that at any moment now you can start to feel how you were wanting to feel. Starting to connect with whatever it is that you were looking for. And then having found it, whenever you find it, just take a moment and just let yourself be with this experience. Let yourself soak it up. Let yourself have the experience. Become familiar with it. Get to know it. Perhaps even more than you already do. And you don't need to hurry this. Take your time, all the time you need. So that then when you have connected with this experience that was missing for you in the problem, and you're connecting with it, see how this experience is the same as in the problem. Notice how 
what you like is the same as the problem. So that resource can find its way to where it needs to go. Or you might be interested to notice your response when I say, what is it about this experience that you like? What is it about this that can be helpful to you in this situation that was problematic to you? What connections can you make? And I can also offer you the idea that when you first learnt to do this experience that you like, it may not necessarily have been easy. You may have had to struggle. There may have been some learning in you that allowed you to move from having a problem with it to being able to be okay with it until finally you're able to actually like it. And in the same way that you learned the experience that you now like, you can learn this experience so that what was a problem does not anymore have to be a problem. It can be a learning. And as such can take all the time it needs. It can be there permanently. Or it might be there intermittently at first. It might come and go. It really doesn't matter. But just notice how learning is something that you know about and can be applied here, relevant here. And for if by some chance there's no obvious connection, my invitation is for you to just be curious about how over the next while something might begin to connect for you and make sense to you in a way that you couldn't have predicted, or couldn't have foreseen, or couldn't have guessed at. It can happen in its own time. So now my invitation is for you, as you're in this experience, to just sit with it and be unhurried about it. Just let it be for a time so that it can settle within your body, within your experience, in whatever way is going to be helpful to you. And then when you're ready, and only when you're ready, you can do what you need to do to complete this experience to let your eyes open if they've been closed, to start to move your body around if it's been still, to become more aware of the externals if you've been unaware of them. And then I'm interested for you to notice your response when I ask, what's different now than when we started? And this is something that you might want to write down. Or you might prefer to just somehow sense or know, or if you're uncertain, to be curious about. And finally, thank you for being willing to go along with this process, with this experience. And I'd be very interested to hear if you could leave a comment about what you found useful personally and also to leave a comment about what you can see is possible now as a result of this with your clients. And it would be just uh, wonderful if you could play with this yourself, with yourself, with your clients, with friends, family, anyone who's willing to play with you and see what you can find useful and please leave a comment about that too. So thanks for being in this experience with me. Thanks for allowing me to be part of your learning and look forward to adding some more with the next video.